In this video, we are exploring the many party tricks of the Citroen DS. So yes, DS party tricks. We have um, everything we need. We have uh, a block of wood. We have something for me to kneel on. We have the official toolkit um, here, uh, complete with this very useful handle, which we will be using. And um, look, adjustable spanner as well. That's quite nice. You get a lovely adjustable spanner in Saab toolkits as well. But um, I'll get you set down because stage one, if we're going to get this wheel off. We've got to remove this rear wing. So I'll set you down there. You can keep an eye on the proceedings. First of all, open the boot. Then I'm going to open this door. And it is one bolt to remove the rear wing. I'll just show you where that is. Is located thusly on the back, so um, I shall undo that. Taking care not to damage this beautiful paint. Some jobs are safer done with fingers. Here we go. Now, a gentle lift. Away she comes, and that's the wing now off the car. Uh, I shall, um, I'm not sure what to do with this now. I shall dispose of it, maybe chuck it over the edge of that cliff over there. Having now sold the wing for a good price, um, we have got access. You'll see cleverly the fuel filler is all part of the inner wing structure, so there's just a flap on the wing, so you don't have to worry about that. That makes it 20 times better than a 2CV. And this is what we can see when we get in. There's the long filler tube down to the um, petrol tank and the breather pipe. And uh, behind this panel, we can see the suspension arm starting to sneak off. And a tiny little mud flap at the front just to try and keep all the spray in check. These are the pegs that the rear wing latches into. And now we're starting to see the base unit structure that makes up the DS. Now it's a small job of removing the wheel trim. Getting just behind it. There we go, that's that off. Um, I'm gonna place that just there. And now hopefully we can crack the, um, the nuts with this bar. Let's see how tight they've been done. Oh. They've been tightened to the perfect amount, but you can actually undo them without having to stand on the factory um, supplied bar, so that's good. Incidentally, this was a question on my driving test. As a confused 17 year old, my tester said, what would you do before jacking the car up? And the answer is, you loosen the nuts, so you're not having to put that force through a car that's on the jack. Do I do more? No. go they're all now ready to come off so um, I guess we need to think about jacking this car up how do we go about that so now we do something that you won't do on most cars um, most cars don't have a stage where to remove the wheel you must first start the engine but that's exactly what we have to do here so um, we shall make sure the gear lever is in a neutral position start the engine give her a few revs and we shall pull the height lever down here on the seat sill to the maximum position and uh, already look she's um, racing upwards and the front must surely follow There we go, and that's on idle, I'm not even having to raise the revs. Beautiful. And now we need to get some equipment out under the bonnet. So we open the bonnet. Span. Where does the stand go? Oh, just there. There we go. 
uh, we want this interesting looking bit of kit. So what do you do with this? Well you um, hook it onto the um, side member here or the sill and if I take that out I can then uh, drop it to its lowest setting which I think is um, see whoa that one there is the lowest setting put my lock pin back in and now I stay clear of the door because the next step is to drop the car down and down she goes she settles on the jack As she settles onto the jack, the rear wheel lifts, as you can see. So now the wheel is free, the wheel can come off. Right, well, we'll just give her a bit of a shake just for safety, just to make sure she's nice and secure. She seems to be. I can turn the engine off for now. You can see the, the wheel bearings clearly in good condition and the brake is not um, dragging. The wheel is spinning very merrily. And now, we can remove it. Incidentally, it seems to use exactly the same wheel nuts as a Citroen 2CV, with this little shoulder on, which is a pain because they get caught as you're trying to put the wheel back on. We shall go for opposites for no great reason at all. Incidentally, I can't put the handbrake on, uh, or rather I can put the handbrake on, the handbrake is on, but it's on the front wheels, not the rears, because as the um, suspension goes up and down, because of the trading arm design, the wheelbase gets longer or shorter, depending on where the wheel is. So you can't have a handbrake on the rear wheels. Voila, that is heavier than a 2CV wheel. And now we can see not only the brake drum, because um, I think there's a myth that DSs have um, all disc brakes. They don't. There's still drums on the back. And we can now see the suspension sphere as well here at the back. Provides all the springing and damping. And uh, via this push rod on the suspension arm. It's all very, very clever stuff. Question is... What happens if we just start the engine now? Uh, let's find out. We shall start the engine. We shall put the suspension back on high and uh, we'll see what happens. Because in theory, this should be fine. I've never tested this theory. So this is going to be Interesting, at some point that arm will start dropping as the hydraulic pressure builds up again. Now let's see the front end moving about. Hydraulic citrons do get confused by being jacked up. Right, the back end is settling. Just trying to work out what's going on. Even though they don't have a brake, there are no electronics involved in the hydraulics on these cars. This is the best experiment I've ever done. Is it actually going to touch? No, not quite. Ignore the noisy bike that's just decided to turn up at this point. Up she goes. Well, isn't that interesting? Now they say it's possible to drive the DS on three wheels. Oh, there goes the jack. The jack has just lifted clear of the ground. We can remove the jack. Now we have 
a blue free wheeler. I'm used to having blue free wheelers. I like blue free wheelers. The question is, will she drive? Right, um, this is slightly nervous. Here we go. Driving a DS on three wheels. Man, you gotta love a Citroen. That's, um, yeah, that's scary. So I'm just reclaiming the camera uh, because, yeah, there you go. It actually works. But you can see the car will rock a bit. But because on high suspension, effectively the suspension is completely locked out. So the arms can go down no more. Um, but they can't go up either because of full hydraulic pressure. So um, there we go. Now that, if I don't mind saying so myself, is a pretty good party trick but it's not the only party trick these cars have another neat feature is if you look at the yellow numbers the inboard numbers so below the 100 there's an 80 and uh, next to the 140 there's a 150 uh, th that isn't kilometers an hour that's your stopping distance in meters because obviously the ds has formidable braking power and uh, yeah, they were rightly quite proud of it. Now another trick the DS has is these inner headlamps, which will turn with the steering. And if that's not brilliant, I don't know what is. Let's see what that looks like out on the road. the car that sees around corners. Just like modern cars do, but better. You've got to love a Citroen. So there we go, we've had some fun with the Citroen DS showing some of its um, party tricks um, from um, rotating headlamps to driving along on three wheels. Uh, the DS can do it all. So I should say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.